Hi, so this is a series of videos where I'm explaining about how to implement MVVM using the ideas of uh, clean architecture. So with the ideas of separation of concern. So in the previous video, we talk about the fragment and the view model. So we show how is the communication between the fragment and the view model. And now we're going to talk about the dependencies of the view model or the domain layer. And we are using an e-commerce application to explain those concepts and how to implement it. So let's do it. So there are mainly three entities that I want to talk about when I mention the domain layer. So the first entity are repositories, and then we have use cases, and then we have objects. Let's talk about repositories first. So in this case, uh, I have one repository that is, that is called product repository. And as you can see, I need to fetch a list of products for my e-commerce application. Some people might think that because of the name repository, this class or this interface would belong to the data layer. But in reality, following the idea of uh, clean architecture, it belongs to your domain. And let me explain you why. So for the view model, it doesn't really matter where the data is actually coming from. It doesn't matter if it's from an API, if you're using retrofit to get a data from a server, or if this data is coming from, I don't know, maybe a Firebase a real time database or even a local database, it doesn't really matter. All it matters for the view model is that you have a, an interface that is called a product repository. And um, whenever you call this meta, method get product list, you're going to get a list of product. And that's a suspend function. That, that is all that matters for the view model. And because of that, it's very easy to change the implementation of the real implementation of your repository. So whenever you change, let's say that you're using an API and you change to another API or even change to a database, then those changes are very easy to be done and it won't affect your view model. So this is the first thing that I want to talk about, a repository. And then we have what we call use cases. Let's take a look in our, in our e-commerce application. One use, what is a use case? As the name suggests, is something that your, your business needs, some, some use, really a use case from, that the user is going to execute. In our, in our case, we have um, basically two use cases that I can think of. So adding or removing a product to the wish list or adding and removing a product to the shopping cart. So those are uh, examples of use cases for this application. And as you can see, I didn't mention anything re regarding Android. So if you have an, an iOS app or even a web version, you would add a product to the wish list. You would have a feature to add, add a product to your shopping cart, right? So the first rule of thumb for the domain layers and also for your use cases is that you shouldn't add Android dependencies to them. So no context, no fragments, view, anything like that. Because that's really where the logic of your business is going to be defined. And the logic of your business has nothing to do with Android or iOS or web. And therefore, no Android APIs. So let's take a look in this use case. It's called add or remove from wish list. Well, there are a lot of ways to implement that. That's how I decided to do it. So first I check if the product is already in the wish list. If it is in the wish list, then I remove it. If it's not, then I add it. As I said, there are different ways to do it. And this is one way of doing things. So as you can see, this is the logic that I decided uh, as a business uh, that, it should, that, that, that we should follow. So as you can see, this is very easy to test because it has no Android APIs. It means that I can easily write unit tests for it. And also, as you can see, I'm also communicating with uh, another repository here, which is also an interface. And it follows the same idea that I explained about the product repository. And this use case also use another, uh, another use case that is called is product in the wish list. So basically, this use case is just uh, to check if a product is already in the wish list. And having a use case is very useful because imagine that in our case we have uh, different screens and in those different screens you would have to add a product to the wish list, right? So if this logic uh, was in your, in your view models, then it would be duplicated. If, if the logic is duplicated in different view models, whenever the, 
that logic change, then you also have to change in all those view models. And that's not a really good practice. So this is one example of why uh, you should be using use cases and also uh, why it belongs to your domain layer. And finally, the what I want to talk about is about um, product. So as we said, we have a product repository that is going to uh, fetch a list of product. But I want to emphasize that this product that you're seeing right now, it belongs to your business layer. Because this is how we define as the business how we want to uh, represent a product. There should be a clear separation between one object that is belongs to your business and one object that belongs to your data layer. So for example, for this application, I'm using an API to fetch a list of products. This product is called product entity in the data layer. So this is the, the real implementation on, on how the backend defines a product. But what would happen if this title would change to name? So let's suppose that the backend has changed and now it's not called, the, the field is not called title anymore, and it's called name. If you're using this entity in your presentation layer, in your business layer, and in your data layer, then this small change would affect your whole application. So that, that is why it's a very good idea to have separate objects, one for your business that is going to be used in your presentation, in your domain, in your business uh, in your business layer and also one for each data source that you have because if that data source changes the only place where you have to change is the is the place where you actually implement uh, accessing the data for that data source so this is one of the reasons why you should have different entities or different objects for each data source that you have and you have just one object that belongs to your domain one object that belongs to your domain layer that is going to be used throughout your application. So those were the things that I wanted to share about the domain layer. A quick recap. We have repositories that are usually interfaces, and then you have use cases where you're going to define the logic, the business logic for your, your application, so you don't have to duplicate that. And finally, you have objects that belong to your domain, and it's not the same that is going to be used for the data stores or the, the implementation of your repositories. And that's it. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the data layer. Thank you for watching. And if this video was useful for you, please hit the like button and also the subscribe because that helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.